All righty. Well, welcome to tonight's Virtual Days on the Lawn event. My name is Alita Robinson, and I am a third year majoring in Youth and Social Innovation in African American Studies, and I am from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, so before we get started, I wanted to remind you guys of all the exciting and upcoming events that we do have, and we guys hope you guys attend, um, such as the Housing Residence Life Panel um, that's going to be taking place on Thursday, April 8th, and then also the Education Abroad panel that's going to be taking place on April 22nd. Um, so you can also view the calendar and register these events. You can visit admissions.virginia.edu slash virtual dodo. For tonight's event, we have faculty and students joining us from the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. To ask questions, please use the question and answering feature at the bottom, and we will be answering some of the questions behind the scenes during the session to save time um, for the live event. This session will last approximately 45 um, to 50 minutes. So please know that it is being recorded and will be made available in the coming days on the virtual Dodo website. And now to hand it over, I'll be passing it over to Will. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Will Guilford. I'm the Assistant Dean for Undergraduate Education here in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences at UVA. And um, I'm only going to do a short presentation because most of today is really about you and the questions that you have. Um, I want to start today just by asking this question. What does success look like? I mean, to you personally. So if you think about, I'm going to go to college and then, and then, and then, what does that look like to you? And it varies by person, but what is sometimes common, especially when you're leaving kind of the kindergarten through 12th grade, you know, middle school, high school system, is that you tend to think about success in these kinds of terms. That I'm, you know, I'm going to have, you know, these majors, always plural, you know, some, you know, at least two, maybe three, four, um, straight A's, because that's always been straight A's. I'm going to want to challenge myself, and challenging myself means I'm going to take 28 credits every semester. They are going to be the hardest ones that I can find, and I'm going to be in at least five clubs and president of all of them. Right. So from our perspective in engineering, and really from our perspective in the university, this is absolutely the wrong way to go about success, finding that vision that you have for yourself. We think that this is a better way to do it, that being in college, being at a place like UVA is about building relationships. It's about learning amazing things, obviously. I mean, it's college. That's what you're supposed to do. That's also about developing your career. And there's this old saying, you know, that your job search starts now. Your career development starts now. And whether you're your age, whether you're my age, you're always building your career. And we try to end, and one of your goals should be to do that. It should be to just grow as a person. You know, back in my day, we talked about finding yourself. That is part of college too. And of course, having fun while doing it all. To, from our perspective, this is what success is all about. And when you're done, when you've done this, um, we think that you'll see particular things. So for example, to us as a university, success looks like a diverse student body, right? That we, we actually, we, one of our core values in engineering is that, um, is that um, diversity is excellence. Just those simple words, diversity is excellence. Um, it is, it's, it's part of the definition. It's not, a mean, it's not a means to an end. And so we pay very close attention to what do our statistics look like? How are we doing um, as an institution when it comes to these diverse student populations? And in engineering, you, there, you know, there's this kind of vision that people have in their head if you walk into a classroom and it's all men in funky glasses. 30%, 33% of our students in engineering are women. That compares to a national average of only about a fifth. And that is extraordinary. We're one of the best in the nation in that regard. And when it comes to graduating, we are the number one public institution in the U.S. for graduating uh, female students out of engineering. And we're really proud of that number. Now, is this good enough? No. 
you know, number one, that's, that's good. 33%, that is something that we continue to work on as an institution. No matter how good it is comparatively, we'll be happy when it's at gender parity. And these same kind of numbers go really regardless of demographic groups, whether you are female, Hispanic, uh, Asian, black, um, it doesn't matter what demographic group you fall into. The University of Virginia School of Engineering has the highest graduation rate in any of these categories. Now, again, is this good enough? No, we want to see a gender makeup that, or I'm sorry, a, 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 a racial and demographic makeup that is completely representative, certainly of the Commonwealth of Virginia. That is the vision that we have for ourselves. That is the vision of success we have for ourselves. And it's something we continue to strive toward and something we want you to help us with. Maybe success to you means money. Maybe it means I'm going to, um, I'm going to get a high paying job when I leave. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And if you look at how our students do, um, we have starting salaries of over $88,000 if you are graduating out of computer science, um, 16, I'm sorry, $70,000 if you are graduating out of, on average, any of our other engineering disciplines. And each of these is well above the national average. And this is sometimes that frequently matters not only to students, but also to parents who yeah, maybe don't want you living in the basement forever. Maybe success to you means you want to not spend your entire time in a classroom or even at UVA. You want to see the world. Well, we have our own Office of Engineering International Programs, whose sole purpose in existence is to find you experiences abroad, to help you make these connections. Um, and so 20%, and this is actually pretty remarkable, 20% of the students in engineering have an international experience before they graduate, 20%. The US average is four. That's the kind of difference that a focus on a broader education has. Um, and that, that more than anything else really is UVA. It's a, it's a focus on breadth. It's about being more than an engineer. It's about being a citizen of the world. That's what we do. And if this matters to you, if this is part of your value system, if that's what success looks like to you, I don't think you'll find many better places. Well, what if success means, well, even when I'm not abroad, I want to be doing things that matter. Well, in the upper left, maybe you want to design and build your own car, and you've actually seen some of that behind me. Maybe you want to get involved in undergraduate research. Um, maybe in the lower left, you want to get involved in cybersecurity competitions. That, by the way, is our multiple national award, uh, you know, number one team. So national award winners multiple years in a row. Maybe you want to build a really ridiculously big plane and fly it. You've seen some of that in the video that's up behind me as well. Well, that's something we value a lot here. 80% of our students, 80% have some kind of really intense out of the classroom experience before their fourth year. And the reason I say before the fourth year is because anyone, almost any engineering school in the country can say that it's 100% of our students that get involved outside the classroom. But that usually includes the capstone design experience when we make you do it, when we force you to. 80% of our students choose to do this. And this says a lot about our students here that they aren't satisfied with just a standard book education. They're not satisfied with just the clubs, with just the books, with just the grit. They want to get their hands and 80% of them just can't be wrong. Now beyond that, we wanna help you towards the success by providing you with the many things that you might need. So some of these I've already, I've already inferred or even talked about. So the Center for Engineering Career Development here in the upper left, their whole purpose in existence is to help you find jobs, help you find internships, help you get involved. Um, uh, the Office of Engineering International Programs, again, they help you find these abroad experiences and craft them and get ready for them. Our Center for Diversity in Engineering, diversity pervades everything that we do here in engineering. When we are making decisions, 
about a direction to go. When we ask a question about how about this change in a class, this innovation, what should we do? We always ask how it affects diverse student populations, whether it was uh, Black, whether it is Latinx, whether it is students from underserved regions, whether it is certain students from disadvantaged backgrounds. We want to make sure that absolutely every student has that chance to shine and do all of these remarkable things. To go along with that, our school has the most merit and need-based scholarships of any of the schools at UVA, even school that's considerably larger than we are. So this is these are scholarships you can apply for once you are here. And these are really designed to can help you realize your dream. We have counseling services, two counselors that are embedded in engineering, right in the engineering school to only serve engineering students. And their whole job is really to help take care of you. Um, we also have free tutoring for any class that you want. We have numerous clubs. Again, you've seen a lot of that going on in the background up here. And finally, we have something that's really important. It's important that you build lasting and meaningful connections with faculty. And what better place to start than your first year here? We have an embedded advising model, meaning that for almost all of you, your academic advisor will be a professor in one of your courses, usually in your introduction to engineering course, but always one of your professors, meaning that you will see your academic advisor not once a semester, which is the standard model. You will see them multiple times a week, every week to make sure that you get to know a faculty member, know them well, are able to get those all important letters of recommendation and just more and most importantly, just have somebody who knows and cares about you as a person and your vision for your success. That's what the embedded advising model does. And of course there's everything else that UVA has to offer. We have this pretty lawn and I hear we have a eh, passable basketball team. But here's the sum total of it. And I'm not saying this as the big sell. I'm saying this because it's true. There's one thing that all of the faculty and all of the staff at UVA know and tell people, especially visitors, especially folks like prospective faculty, visiting deans, visiting presidents. And that is our students are the secret to our success. They don't always use those words. Frequently, it's like, you will not believe how good our undergraduates are, but that's what they mean. We, you aren't, you're gonna do great things no matter where you go, okay? Please, no one in admissions throw anything at me, but wherever you chose to go to school, you are going to kick ass and take names, right? You guys are just amazing. What makes a place like UVA ama amazing is who chooses to come here right? You make us amazing. It's not really the other way around. UVA is a door. The faculty here are doors to your success. They are not the success itself. So you've already taken the first step. You've gotten admitted to UVA and you've taken a second step, which is to show up here and listen to me go blah, blah, blah. But really the secret is we want you to add your success your uniqueness, your diversity, your point of view, your experiences, your skills, your work, your energy, all to us, to what we do, so that together we can all be more successful. All right, that, that is actually all I have prepared for today is my big pitch. And from this point on, I really wanna move on to your questions. What do you wanna know about UVA? What can we tell you that you don't already know? I say, we, because I am joined here by some, uh, some students that have been very happy to volunteer their time to tell you a little bit more about the programs here and help answer your questions. So I'm gonna ask if they could each bring up their video and if they could um, make an appearance on screen and tell you a little bit about themselves. Lama, do you wanna begin or uh, Ricky, uh, Rikia? Rikia, why don't you begin? Hi, um, my name's Rikia. I'm a fourth year aerospace engineering major here. Fantastic, thank you. Lama? Hi, sorry. Um, there we go. Hi, my name is Lama. Um, I'm a third year aerospace engineering student here at UVA. Thank you very much. And Joshua? 
How you doing, everyone? My name is uh, Joshua Franklin. I'm a third year aerospace major, <laughs> like everybody else, and I use humans pronouns, and I'm a student associate in the Center for Diversity and Engineering. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And so uh, I'm going to be passing off some questions to, uh, to our students, and I'm just going to start um, running through the list here. Um, and just if you see me looking off to the right, I'm combing through a long list of questions here, and I will get to, we will get to as many as we possibly can. Um, so the top question, or the very first question on my list is um, one that we're asked a lot, and it's from Eric, and it reads, uh, besides the graduation requirements, what are the differences between a CS degree in engineering and in the College of Arts and Sciences? Is there a difference in job opportunities and research, starting salary, and so on? So um, I will do want to highlight the, gradu the graduation requirement differences just briefly and kind of talk about this a little bit for folks who maybe haven't looked into computer science. So we have a, a large and really outstanding computer science, uh, Department of Computer Science that's housed in the School of Engineering. Um, all of its classes are taught through engineering and all of its faculty are in engineering. But they do actually deliver two degree programs. One is a bachelor's of science um, in computer science offered through engineering. And the other is a bachelor of arts offered through our College of Arts and Sciences. The substantive differences are there are significantly more math requirements to the degree that comes out of engineering. There um, also out of coming out of engineering, there's a major project involved, kind of like a capstone or senior thesis. Um, that need, none of these are required through the Bachelor of Arts program. Now, Eric, directly to your question, kind of what are some things about that, uh, some other things that might differ? Um, starting salary, I actually have absolutely no idea. But what I can tell you, though I, I will decline to offer specific examples, um, degrees in computer science offered, in, I'm sorry, Bachelors of Arts are sometimes not preferred by employers compared to Bachelor of Science. I know of very specific examples with very specific large employers where they are only interested in Bachelor of Science degrees, which is not to say that a Bachelor of Arts through the College of Arts and Sciences it was, it was without value. A degree in computer science is an outstanding preparation for all sorts of careers. Just know that it, it, there is some limitation to uh, hiring. Um, so here's a great one for, um, our, for one of our students or a couple of our students. What is the typical work-life balance for engineering students? Okay, I'll call on one of you. How about um, uh, Joshua, why don't you start? Yeah, so basically what the workload kind of looks like is you'll basically use a general format being class from around, you know, 9 to 2, 9 to 12-ish kind of in your first year. It depends on your uh, Monday, Tuesday schedule. Oh, there's a bee kind of following me. There we go. Uh, but yeah, definitely um, it is a pretty manageable load just as long as you, you know, learn some time management skills and things like that. And um, I would say definitely take advantage of study spaces while you're on grounds. And one rule that I learned is like working – you know, till five, stop and taking a break, then maybe picking up later, just, just, just so give yourself a little break in between those, your classes and your actual studies and things like that. But yeah, the workload isn't too bad, just as long as you have some, you know, good time management skills and like, you know, you're spending your time wise and spreading out your time, it's nice and, nice and organized. It's kind of curious from our students, would one of you mind uh, telling us kind of, what do, what do you do for kind of, um, you know, fun and just out of interest when you are not studying. And I realize things right now are a little weird because of the pandemic, but if it weren't for the pandemic, what would you normally be involved in? Well, for me, I'm a part of the Cavalier March Band and a couple of club sports at UVA, so that's what I love doing. Um, I just came from a run a couple of minutes ago, but um, yeah, definitely run outside exercising. You know, UVA has a bunch of gyms, AFC Slaughter, uh, IM teams and a whole bunch of other really fun activities that you can do as well as like, you know, academic club and things like that. Great. And uh, let's see, um, uh, Rakia, do you want to say anything? 
So um, outside of coursework for um, clubs, I'm in um, high-powered rocketry. I'm in the National Society of Black Engineers. I work part-time at the Center for Diversity and Engineering. And then as far as for fun, um, I like to go to the gyms here on grounds, and I also play Dungeons and Dragons. So That is so old school. I love it. Okay. A lot of folks on here my age are like, oh, that's so neat, because, you know, we're not irrelevant. Um, Great. Thank you so much, both of you. Uh, let's see, there was a question here. Um, Mandy asked, if you want to major or minor across different schools, say engineering and the college, do you have to complete the general requirements for both? No, you do not have to do that. Um, the, so you have to complete the general requirements that are specific to your primary school of enrollment. So if you are a engineering student who, um, who decides to double major, for example, in Spanish, then you need to complete what counts for us as kind of general education requirements. These would be humanities and social sciences, unrestricted electives and things like this. You would not then have to duplicate those, say with the writing requirements in the college. Um, it doesn't work that way. There you just have to complete the major requirements. See, um, so Hayden asks, how hands-on or pro and uh, on or project-based are engineering classes? And I will give a quick answer to this from my perspective, but I also would like to hear from a couple of the students, um, maybe starting with a, a Lama. So the um, when I try to keep my classes as hands-on as possible, so I teach, for example, a design class where even during the pandemic, I make sure that students if they want to and are able to, able to come into shop and get their hands dirty with everything from 3D printing, electronics, building projects, all this kind of stuff. And under normal circumstances, you will find plenty of examples like that in each one of the majors. But I'm now kind of curious from the student's point of view, what do you think more generally about hands-on and project-based in engineering? So in my experience, um, it's been pretty hands-on. Uh, my intro to engineering class, we did like a hands-on project where we had to build um, a game and then we um, went and partnered with like um, a fourth grade class and we worked with the kids to make a game that they could A, learn math from and B, have fun with. And then I'm sure it's different across every major, but from what I've heard from people, um, uh, uh, each major has some pretty hands-on aspects. And for aerospace, for example, um, in our intro to aerospace class, we we built a rocket, we built a blimp, and the labs have been pretty interactive. And mine is COVID, because like things are a little different now because of COVID. But other than that, um, it's been pretty hands-on. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so Olivia asks, uh, are there chances for first years to try out different majors within engineering? Not exactly. Um, I'm trying to think of the very best way to describe this, but we have a, we have a common first year. So when you you probably you probably know this, but um, UVA engineering first year, all students take more or less the same things, um, uh, with the only exception being anything that you got, say, dual enrollment or advanced placement credit for, and kind of get out of. So during your first year, you have a chance to basically check things out. Um, we have majors nights where students and faculty from different majors talk about what they do. Um, in many sections of introduction to engineering, the instructors take um, some efforts to make sure that you're well informed about the different engineering majors and kind of what they mean. And mostly, I think probably by osmosis, you're kind of, you're around, you're immersed in it, you have an opportunity to talk to people and you start gaining a sense of what the different majors are, what they mean, and which ones sound most exciting to you. And I think one of the most telling statistics we have is 50% of students change their mind about their major in the first semester. So you come, it's like, oh, I want to major in whatever, aerospace, I'm going to teach you guys. And then uh, all of a sudden, by the end of the first semester, I don't want to do that. I want to be in material science. 50% of students end up doing that. And so that I think speaks a lot to the kind of immersive experience you have and the opportunities to learn more about it. Uh, do any of our students want to add to any of that? A head shake no is acceptable. There's definitely opportunities to try 
um, second year, I know I was between civil and aerospace and I was allowed to take both intro classes, which definitely like had an impact on the decision that I made. Um, so, and I know someone who changed their second year from civil to aerospace. So there's also, there's always room to change even after first year. It's not like the end of the world if you decide that you don't like the major that you originally picked. Excellent point. Thank you. Um, Matthew asks a question that is, um, is very common at, um, at, at uh, Days on the Lawn. Uh, kind of why is UVA a better engineering school, say, than Virginia Tech? Um, and that's one of those questions that I in some sense won't answer, but not for the reason you think. I'm not going to answer it because I think we're worse off than one school or another, but because it invites saying that there's something wrong with a different school than UVA. Um, if you think about UVA, UVA has its own particular character and culture and environment. And so does Virginia Tech, so does MIT, so does Harvard, wherever you want to name. Um, we have really super special courses that no one else has. So does every other school in the United States. We have amazing faculty who are dedicated to your success. So does every other school in the United States. No matter what I can name, for a basis of comparison, I'd just be trying to essentially denigrate the students, the faculty, the curricula of institutions that I respect tremendously. I think a better way to look at it isn't, you know, is school A better than school B? Because I don't, th I honestly, I just don't think there's an answer to that. And I think the answer is always no, no matter who you're comparing. I think the more appropriate thing to ask is, what is the right environment for you? If you're looking for an environment that is rich in, in experiences, um, that is puts a heavy emphasis on education beyond the basics of engineering and really gets into giving you opportunities in the humanities, the social sciences and going abroad and opportunities for leadership. Um, that's, that's our flavor. That's what we do. Maybe better than anybody else. Maybe, maybe not. Other places have things that they do better than anybody else. The question is, what version of best is you? Which one appeals to you? And I think that becomes the right answer for you. Um, Kate asks, uh, how difficult is it to get into a desired major, especially computer science? Uh, the answer to that is zero difficulty. Once you are through, once you get through your first, um, what, seven months of study here, so halfway through your second semester, you declare your major. That's it. You don't apply. You don't have to prove yourself if you are successful up to that point and haven't got kicked out of school or anything, which again, we have tremendously high graduation rates that just doesn't normally happen. Then you just say, I wanna be a go into computer science and that's it. That's all there is to it. You literally fill out a form, online form. I want this done. Um, let's see, uh, Maximus has my one of my favorite questions. Can you please tell me about student research at UVA? Um, let me start by throwing this to Joshua, who I know has some experience and others fill in. And which, what was the question again one more time? Uh, the question was, can you tell me more about undergraduate research at UVA? Okay, yeah. So I did a little bit of research in my first year in a biology lab and basically how it works, you can go to the undergraduate students uh, website. If you search at UVA undergraduate research website, it'll pop up with a lot of different opportunities and things like that. But also I would encourage you to, uh, you know, reach out to your professors. If there's something you're particularly interested in that area, they might only have it for grad students, but definitely reach out to those best and ask them if there's anything you can do, anything to help or to kind of get your foot in the door, even, you know, slide a resume in there for later in your third and fourth years and things like that. But yeah, basically I would just say, kind of do your research on <clears throat> what labs are available, um, what professors are in them, get to know that professor and you can you know, slide your way in there. Excellent. Um, uh, Rakia or, um, or Lama, do you have, have you had any research experiences as yet? No? And that's not too unusual because um, of course we're in a, pandemic in case you hadn't heard and that effectively turned off the tap of undergraduate research. So it's 
pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's one of these things that's easy to say. And the part that's easy to say is just this. You, ident you figure out what you are interested in. And it doesn't have to be super specific. It can be like, I'm interested in whatever, um, you know, clean drinking water for the world. I'm interested in cancer. I am interested in, um, in autonomous vehicles. And once you've kind of got that basic notion in your head, then you just kind of search for and identify and uh, some faculty at UVA that do that. We have folks that do all of these things. And then comes the hard part. You have to talk to them, right? You email them and then you don't hear back. And then you have to email again and you still haven't heard back. And you email them and you get back, oh, I'll get back to you shortly and they don't get back. You have to do it a fourth time, but you show some persistence and you might hear no, or you might hear, I only take fourth years, or you might hear, sure, come to my next lab meeting and you're in, right? That's where you start. It starts with just like all things do, just with people and with talking with the, the big scary professors and asking them and showing your interest and kind of building that relationship. And with that relationship built, our hope then is that you find a lab home for your remaining four years. The, and there, it is, there's no such thing as too early to start. Start as early as you can. Do not be discouraged. And, um, and importantly, I just want to say that there are very few labs in engineering in any of the departments that do not include undergraduates, not as dishwashers, but as equal partners in discovery. That's how we view them. We, some of us even call them undergraduate colleagues. That's, you're part of the team. So here, somewhere else, wherever you go, get involved in research. I have, one of my students once told me, I learn more in your lab in one day than I learn in all of my, my classes combined in one week. That is the kind of impact that it can have. Here's a good one for the students. Uh, Brandon asks, can, uh, can you talk a little bit about the internships you've taken part in and how you secured them? Um, realizing again, pandemic also turned off most internships. So I don't know for sure if any of our students have had one yet. Um, I might have put it in the chat earlier, but um, I had a internship with Lockheed Martin uh, last summer. Um, they're the people that like make the F-35, you know, the Sikorsky, the, uh, you know, the SR-71 Blackbird for all the, for all the plane nerds out there. But um, yeah, that was a, it was supposed to be an in-person um, internship, but it ended up being virtual. Um, the way I attained the internship was I went to the BEA Conference, which is the Black Engineer of the Year Award sponsored by the Center for Diversity and Engineering. Yeah, come on, give them a shout out. So yeah, definitely going to career fairs and things like that. Um, you might be a little surprised the first year when you go to like career fairs and things like UVA that um, when you go to Newcomb Hall and things like that, you'll see signs for like, you know, third and fourth years, looking for second years, something like that. And not many, not many employers and things like that are looking for four years. So I, I would say don't be discouraged. Don't, you know, immediately rush going into an internship. Make sure you kind of learn and figure out your career path really before diving deep into that world. But, but yeah, definitely go to conferences, you know, use the CDE, use the Career Center. They will literally match you up with, you know, potential buyers, especially as a first year. If anything, that's, that's what you're interested in. You already have your path kind of laid out. So, yeah, that's the, some of my advice. Go to conferences, you know, see your advisor, come to CDE, and, you know, you'll have no problem finding one from there. Excellent. And tied to this, before anyone goes anywhere, can you, um, I don't see where this question went, but there was a question about um, basically how, how did the offices or your or advisors kind of help you with this? Joshua, do you have an answer to that one? Um, what was what was the question again? I, I thought I read it in the chat, but then I missed it. Okay, so the yeah, the 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 question in the chat, and I can't find it right now either, is basically they were asking how um Kind of how were your advisors, offices like career development or CDE, how were they helpful in helping in um, helping you find internships? Almost definitely. Um, a lot of your professors 
have worked within the real world before I feel like becoming to um, UVA, my professor, uh, my advisor, uh, Professor Smith, Natasha Smith, she worked at the Navy and she has a lot of um, experience with constructions and things like that and construction companies. Um, Mr. James Bland, who is the program director of the CDE, has so many connections within NSBE and to career services and so many other outlets through UVA that we're connected to. And, you know, we'll sponsor trips to, you know, DC, to Texas, to these very, very, very large conventions where there are so many UVA alumni. I remember I went to Washington, D.C. Uh, my second year. I went to the Norfolk Grunham table and two people looked at my resume and were like, oh, you go to UVA? Yeah, I went to grad school at UVA. So you just, you really never know of the, the deep, deep network that UVA has, not only kind of on grounds, but in the world. So definitely make sure to highlight those things on your resume and always, you know, put yourself out there and be willing to talk to people because you never know the connections that you'll have to grounds. Excellent. Um, so uh, Sophie asks, um, how does UVA help undecided engineers determine which engineering major to choose? And, um, and uh, she also asked a little bit about uh, support for engineering students. Well, let's start with the first one. Um, um, let's see, uh, Riccio, maybe you could say something about how you, what things you experienced here in your first year that helped you choose your major? Um, so I'm kind of in the other 50% that didn't change their mind, but I definitely, you know, thought about it. Um, and like, I think these same events that I would say would help someone figure out what they want to do are the same events that help reinforce that I wanted to do aerospace. Um, so I think like the biggest one was just like, I think I called major nights, um, where like students and faculty just come and talk about the majors and, um, you just, they're all there in one place. Um, and then honestly, like the curriculum for like first year engineers, like I never knew I'd like computer science. I actually consider computer science just because I love the introductory course so much. And I actually took a few additional classes after that just because I enjoyed the first. Um, and then just talking to students, like um, I would actually run into a student in another major and just, hey, um, sorry about you. Can you tell me about <laughs> your major? And like, they're friendly, they will talk to you. Um, so I, I think it was said earlier, just put yourself out there, ask what you need to ask. Excellent. Um, so yeah, there, there are a lot of, I think the short answer, there are a lot of opportunities on, to help you learn about the majors, kind of help you decide. Um, and I think you'll, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to name them all because some of the, so many of them are just organic. I think you'd probably agree, right? You know, there, there are formal things like major nights. There are formal efforts like your intro to engin engineering classes, but part of it is just being here right? You, you're here and you just kind of soak it in and you sometimes, maybe, you know, half of the decision-making process you'd never actually be able to describe once it's done. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so um, Abigail asks a question near and dear to my heart because it involves maker spaces. What are your, what's your favorite part of maker spaces and labs and can you use them outside of class? You need to buy your own materials. So, um, the makerspace community here is quite broad. So um, in fact, I'm going to type just as an answer, a web address. If I'm remembering it correctly. I think that's right, Makergrounds. So Makergrounds is kind of a central hub that kind of leads you to all of our many makerspaces around UVA. As for what the rules are, they vary entirely by makerspace. There's things like the Lacey Lab, where, where you, you know, about 50% chance you'll have your introduction to engineering class in there. That's a makerspace. And if the 3D printers aren't being used, you're free to use them. Um, if you go over to Lacey Hall, which um, a, a lot of Lacey Hall stuff is a, has been appearing behind me, you can go in there. And if, you know, you want to build a car, they, that's kind of what they do. They build cars and airplanes and Mars robots and other just, and bat, you know, battle robots and, you know, just giant things. It's fantastic. Um, and these are things where you can, you know, again, sometimes you need to do the after saving, but you, once you are free to use them. In um, many cases, there's materials around for you to use. Um, it really, just like everything else, it's really a matter of, figuring out what exactly is it you want to do and then build that relationship with the person who runs the makerspace. Just like if you wanna get involved in research, build a relationship. 
with the person who does the research. Um, uh, Ansa asks, are there labs at UVA with drone related projects or research? Yes, there is. Um, and I'm not even going to try to name all of those people. It's an ever growing group of folks. But um, uh, Nicola Bezo is the one I just can name off the top of my head, but there are plenty of others. There's drone and drone related research going on in the School of Engineering, and you can certainly get involved in it. Um, let's see. Uh, trying to kind of parsing down here. So in case we run out of time, we kind of hit some of the big ones. Um, let's see, here's, I'm gonna jump down to Emily's. Is it helpful to get AP credit for physics C mechanics if you want to do a double major or study abroad? I think any of the, um, any of kind of the first year core classes that you came in with AP credit for gives you flexibility. I think a great way of looking at AP credit, um, a lot of folks look at AP credit as though it, they are gift cards, right? I got a gift card in physics, I got another gift card in applied math, and, I, and if you don't use your gift cards that you've somehow wasted them. If you don't use your AP credit, you've wasted it. It's not what AP credit's about. AP credit's like a savings account. Right, you deposit it there and it gives you flexibility in the future or it gives you protection in the future. So if stuff goes wrong, well, guess what? You had banked some credit, you're good to go. If you want to study abroad, you can use those AP credits selectively to open up a semester so that you can study abroad. Or maybe you wanna open up some space in your schedule so that you can double major or minor or whatever it is that you wanna do. It gives you that flexibility. That's Kind of the appropriate use of AP credit. So whether it's in physics, in chemistry, computer science, applied math, they all ultimately achieve the same thing, which is giving you that flexibility. Um, do any of, I'm just wondering, do any of our students want to say anything about your kind of AP credit or dual enrollment experience? Um, I came in with a lot of CS credit as well as like a physics credit. But I would just definitely talk to your advisor because like some, some physics credits are weird, like you only account for the lab or only part of the lecture. But I, I would, fortunately was enough to, you know, get out of the CS requirements. And to that respect, I was able to kind of take another class that I wanted in like get an architecture minor. So definitely if you have some of those credits and you were, are wanting to pursue another area of study, that's, that, that's where those credits can be kind of shifted and changed a little bit. Um, I personally did uh, IB or International Baccalaureate in um, high school, and so I got credit for that. And those, I didn't really get any um, engineering related stuff. I did get like HSS stuff like psychology and English. And so I was able to use those spaces where I would have did an HSS elective as um, for my minor in astronomy. Excellent, thank you. Um, this is gonna stick with the students here for a little bit, because the next one I think is just, it's an outstanding question. How is, how is the engineering experience different to your expectations? So you came in with this vision in your head. It's kind of where we, I started the whole thing, kind of the vision you had ahead of what things are gonna be like. What's it actually been like? How do, how do they compare? Uh, Lemma, why don't you begin? Sorry, I was typing an answer to one of the questions that were. Okay. Uh, the question was um, the question was about how your how your actual experience as, in the School of Engineering how it kind of compares to your expectations. It's kind of how we began the whole talk. So like you know what what's your vision of success, what's your time here going to be like, and how how is that compared to what it's really been like? Um, honestly, I'm really happy that I stuck with engineering, um, because. Um, even if you have doubts sometimes, if it's really what you want to do, it's definitely worth it. And like you should push through because like I've made some of my uh, closest friends through engineering. I've experienced a lot of opportunities. I think all the hands-on activities that we've done has been absolutely great and a really good experience. And I really enjoy the major and I really enjoy the um, 
what the end result's going to be. And engineering is a very versatile major, and I can really do anything with the degree that I want to. And um, I just, I, I think overall, it's been a good experience. Cool. I'd love to hear an answer from uh, um, uh, Rikia or, uh, or Joshua on this one as well. Um, so I didn't listen to this kind of stuff when I uh, first started engineering. I was that person who came here and was like, I'm going to be president of all the clubs. I'm going to take like 23 credits. Don't do that. Um, I learned with time that what I found to really matter during my time here was like finding that one thing, like not everything, but that one thing I really loved and just throwing everything I had into it. And that has been so fulfilling and rewarding. Um, so definitely listen <laughs> to that advice. Um, and I think one of the things I loved about, this is my fourth year, my last year. So one of the things I loved at my time so far here, my time here at UVA is um, the freedom and like power to kind of do whatever I wanted. Like I felt like if there was a project or idea that I had, there was like material space and funding for it somewhere if I wanted it. And I think that's amazing. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's see. Sorry, the screen keeps moving. Um, how difficult is it to get into engineering and academic clubs? Are they mostly application-based? Um, now, you don't typically, I mean, you don't really have to apply. I think the, the biggest trick, it's like most things, um, once you get involved, to stay involved. And um, it, we, just, we have so many really awesome ones to choose from, whether it's in the background, you've seen uh, Who's Flying, it's our SIA um, Aero Competitive Club. You've seen scenes from um, uh, Virginia Motorsports. They race Mini Baja and Mini Form. Now they're doing Mini Formula One. I actually just stopped by um, yes, uh, two day, uh, yesterday, actually, uh, yesterday morning and saw their car. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but whether it's any of those high powered rocketry, um, internationally genetically engineered machine competition, whatever it is, it's really just a matter of embracing your own interest and staying involved. And I think as um, Rikia just said, trying to kind of focus on the one or two things that really matter to you, as opposed to trying to do 10 things all at once. And that makes all the difference. Other than that, yeah, getting involved is, is, is the, in some sense the easy part. Um, let's see. Uh, some of these are getting a getting in some kind of weedy questions here, but I think this is a good one. I want to Darius, you ask a really good um, question that I think deserves an answer. What is the culture of UVA engineering, and ask specifically about collaborative versus competitive? And I want to give my perspective as a dean and as a faculty member. And then I think this one, it'd be really great. I think it's really important to hear it from the students themselves. UV engineering, and it's kind of funny, actually, I hear this about almost any major we can name. It's talked about as being so competitive. The funny thing is I actually hear this about any major at any university. Oh, it's so competitive. I think that, University has a way of um, instilling this notion that you're competing against the student sitting next to you. We, that's seldom intended to be the case, if ever. And uh, it's certainly in reality, you know, it's not meant to be the case. In fact, that's why in engineering, we focus so much on team-based learning. We, you know, students need to learn to work in teams, work in a collaborative environment. That's not always an easy thing to learn, and the only real way to learn it is to do it and do it over and over and over again. And you're going to be on more, so many teams by the time you're done here to make you dizzy. All right. But to, to me, the competitive nature is an illusion. And the, com the collaborative nature of the university and engineering in particular is the reality. But again, don't take my word for it. I'm a professor for 23 years, how? So uh, students, what do you think about this question of culture of collaboration versus competitiveness? Um, I feel like I had the same misconception when I came to college, but I completely 
disagree with like I I think it's very collaborative here. Um, I feel like it's very collaborative and that your um, teammates will, they expect like great work from you. And, um, and I think you definitely will be prepared to give that good work. But, and then as said, there's so many projects that you'll do over your time here and you um, learn how to be better at collaboration with your time. Um, I definitely think I'm a better teammate now than I was when I first started my first year. So I think it's very collaborative. I really don't feel the competition here. I completely agree. Um, like the teamwork is the basis of UVA engineering. Everything you do is um, to teach you how to work in a team. It's um, rarely do you have like group work that you have to do alone. Um, so I think if anything, um, it just helps teach you to work more with people. And because all of your classes are with the same people, um, once you choose your major, you become friends with everyone and everyone works on projects and homework assignments together and helps each other out, study groups form. So it's really not competitive actually. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't believe, you know, any of those stories about, you know, people competing in each other grades and things like that. It, it's, it's um, it, we're all in this together. We're all in this, you know, learning struggle together as one engineering school. And the competitive things that, you know, that that will matter, like things like the rocket project, shooting your rocket as far as you can, you know, fun stuff like that. But as as a whole, I definitely could see, especially my first year, I would see, you know, people getting, it would say, you know, words like, oh, wow, I only got an 85 as opposed to 100 on this exam. But I, I wouldn't pay that much attention to that, especially if you got like, you know, a C or something like that. Just make sure you're doing the best that you can in the space that you take up. And I think you'll be fine. And, you know, focusing on yourself, especially in those really, really times, like towards finals and things like that, when you have midterms and things like that, focusing on yourself and your own individual success is like the best thing you can do. Not worrying about, you know, getting that hundred, but actually learning the content and things like that. Cause grades sometimes do get in the way of like actually learning the content. And that's what's, that's what's important. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so let's see. Um, Sophie asks, how good is UVA engineering for cybersecurity? Um, I'm just going to throw that right back to our cybersecurity team, which has won nationally, uh, been number one nationally, like one, one. Um, is it three years in a row now? I think we've now, I think we may have just passed three. So the very first year they competed, they won, they won the next year. And I'm thinking maybe they won this year, year as well. That's not something that happens by accident. Now we don't have a separate, you know, technically a concentration or track in cybersecurity, but that doesn't mean that the opportunities to learn aren't there. We have classes that deal with it, including one with that's aptly named Defense Against the Dark Arts. And, um, and then of course we have the more important part, which is again, kind of behind me, it's experiential education. You know, where you get in, you get involved in the club, and you play, and you compete, and you win. And that is where you really learn. Um, let's see. Kind of answered the question about um, uh, how manageable coursework is and if there's time for extracurriculars. Do you any, uh, see um, uh, Alita's typing an answer to that, but do any of our students want to add anything to that? Do you feel you have time for all the extracurriculars that you want to do? Um, for me, oh, you got Rakeem. Oh, I was going to say that um, I definitely think it's manageable. Like I, every semester I've been involved in extracurriculars, taking up leader, leadership positions, had a part-time job. I think it's very doable. Yeah, definitely. I would not do what I did first year in like kind of be on the rowing team, wake up at 5 a.m., then go to band practice the, that night. I would definitely not do that. But definitely there is space and time to kind of pursue your real passions and things like that, just as long as you, you know, manage your time well and things like that. Say if you have a lighter semester, you know, 15, 12 credits, something like that. Definitely you can have more room for clubs and things like that as opposed to some major where you have to take 17 in the semester. Maybe, you know, time to, you know, pull away from the, some of those clubs and things like that to make sure, you know, you're doing okay you have enough time to do your academics and keep your own wellness and wellness and things like that, uh, number one. 
So that would be my advice. Okay, thank you, all of you. Um, I want to get into a couple of um, kind of these uh, couple of weedy questions. I have uh, Clementine's question. I want to come back to maybe as our closer. Um, so, the question is: UVA accept? Uh, wait, that's not actually what I was looking at. Uh, considering my school is not holding IB testing, will you take IB scores for credit? And basically, are we going to be changing um, kind of what we accept for AP or IB scores since it's been such a freakishly weird year? Uh, the short answer is no. I have heard no movement on the um, AP or IB scores that are required to get uh, credit here at UVA. You'll find all of those at our UVA Engineering Transfer uh, webpage. Um, but uh, no, I, I certainly understand the concern. Uh, we talk here about grading and equity and grading a lot, um, but um, I don't think that one's going to be changing. Um, and let's see, we are just about out of time. So I want to maybe wrap up on Clementine's question. Clementine's asked, you know, wh where do these students envision themselves after graduating from UVA engineering? And I certainly know kind of statistically where students end up. But for you three, um, what, what does your future look like to you? What, do you? what do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, let's maybe start with uh, Delsco go to left to right on my screen, Rakia. Um, so we kind of touched on it a little bit. So those resources we talked about earlier today, um, such as like the CDE, going to like conferences like BEA, NSBE conferences. Um, I actually got a job in my third year and will be starting that immediately after graduation with Lockheed Martin. Um, so definitely take advantage of the resources. They work and they're there for you. Um, as far as like my dream job, um, so I'll be working in the space division at Lockheed Martin, and my dream job is to be a project manager one day on one of those projects. Outstanding. Congratulations. Let's see. Uh, next, Joshua. Yeah, definitely. Um, my, my dream is kind of out there. Uh, literally, I want to be an astronaut, and I have been since I was like seven years old and things like that. Leland Melvin. I don't know if you guys know, he's from Lynchburg. I met him at a cookout when I was seven years old. And since then, I've, you know, I've always wanted to pursue that dream. And so hopefully, if I continue with Lockheed Martin, I'll enroll in that little LPPDL program, pursue grad school, work for four years, then hopefully apply to be an astronaut at NASA. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. Maybe you'll see me on a poster or something. Outstanding. Yeah, and actually, just up until very recent years, we actually had a shuttle astronaut on our faculty here at UVA in, uh, in MAE. Uh, Kathy and Thornton. Kathy yep. Thornton, that's yeah. right. Found her picture on a wall at the, uh, um, what was it? Uh, Women, I think it was Women Astronauts Museum in Cleveland, Ohio, believe it or not. Um, and uh, uh, Lemma, what, uh, what do you have planned? Um, uh, a very big dream is like Josh was since I was a kid. I was like, I want to be an astronaut. Um, so that's what made me decide to go into aerospace. Um, and honestly, I have not, like, I don't have, like, a specific, like, oh, this is the company that I want to work for. But I definitely, like, a dream job would be, like, NASA, SpaceX. Um, and I'm also really interested in piloting if I go to flight school later. Or not if, I really want to go to flight school later. Um, so, yeah, I have a lot of things that I want to do um, post-graduation. I think, honestly, um, doing UV engineering has helped because I have a lot of experience in um, different areas now. Awesome. And by the way, and a perk of being here in aerospace engineering, at least actually in any major, we do have a really, really advanced flight simulator here uh, that students, faculty, staff, whoever's here can actually use to, um, to get in some of your flight hours for becoming a private pilot. So if that's part of your dream, if that's one of the steps you want to take, that resource is here for you to use. I um, think we are um, think we are out of time, and so I just want to thank you all for spending your hour with us this evening. We know this uh, this whole arrangement is kind of cumbersome and weird, but we really do appreciate you um, being here with us. 
Yes. Um, so I'm just going to like get a little closing out. So I just want to say thank you to the faculty and the students of the engineering schools. Just going to give them another round of applause. Um, it was really inspiring. I have many friends in the engineering school and I think that this is a special place and I think you all will be happy to be a part of the program. We definitely appreciate you guys time and your insight tonight. And we also want to thank you, the admitted students behind the screens, um, for attending this amazing virtual experience. We hope that tonight's event has helped you learn more about the University of Virginia has to offer. Um, to view tonight's recording, as we mentioned before, or to also register for other events, please refer to the virtual DOTA website, and that's going to be admissions.virginia.edu slash virtual DOTA. Thank you again. Wahoo wah, and have a great night.